What's up, everybody? This is Presto. Corporal Nasich. And you are listening to episode 66 of the Nintendo's podcast. Execute episode 66. Yeah, I can hear myself. Um, Good morning. Good morning to all. This is a rare, uh, a rare bear morning episode. Usually this is our uh, coffee with corporal time, uh, but not today, even though we are drinking coffee. We are. Coffee has been drinking. Mm. So on today's episode, this is a little bit long overdue, not, not too long. We are going to talk about that Nintendo Direct that happened this week. And we've already talked about it. We actually put some reels out there, which I think we're going to do more of because that was pretty fun. I like doing um, the reels. Yeah. We were supposed to do this episode on Wednesday. On third, and then Wednesday. we were supposed to do it on Thursday. And then we were supposed to do it on Friday. But you know what? We got it in. We got it in before the end of the year. Tom! <laughs> welcome! Good morning. Uh, good afternoon. Tom. Good afternoon, Tom. Because Tom's, Tom's in you the paid. UK. You pair. He's like, you paid for Legends. Never mind. I, you pair You paid legends. for Legends. I've never <laughs> played Raid Shadow Legends. Uh, Tom and T.S. T. Villa. You one in the same. T.S. Villa. T. Silva. Look at you pronouncing it. Oh, so that's right. the key. We have to do it when the sun is up for you to do correct, correct <laughs> pronunciation. And for you to screw up, I like. But okay. listen, do you see this? You can't. I can't get a good inside shot of the coffee, but it still has coffee in it, which means my brain is still forming. I've got coffee. Oh yeah. So let's start. So we're going to talk about the Nintendo Direct. We're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the farming Ugly. simulator. Um, <laughs> Corporal. I. I. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I. I'm mad at you right now. Me. We should have prepared for this. But you should have gotten a button shortcut set up on your keyboard so each time we mention a farming simulator, a little tractor goes across the screen. Farm simulator, <laughs> farm simulator. We can do it in post. We can do it in post. Okay. Um, let, for, let's start with what are we drinking. Fate because... Maker, welcome in. What's hey, good? Jeremy. What's good, um, Nintendo ads, you free <laughs> legends? Oh, legends, I like this. By the way, if you're listening to this, you really got to come to these live episodes. Yes. Except for when somebody comes to Corporal's front door. Like all of the children <laughs> are going through the door. I mean, that's Sunday morning, right? Um, right? Let's start they're, with what it we're... It looks like they're going to go ride bikes. So. I guess they, I guess they found the cat. Um, <laughs> let's start with what we're drinking. Corporal, what are you drinking right now? This very moment, I just took a sip of delicious, pure, clean, uh, pure life... Water. I can't believe that's not a LaCroix. Uh, you're right. You're right. It should be LaCroix. So what are you Most... really what are you really drinking though? Tell the people what you told me. I am drinking a white mocha from Starbucks. It's beautiful. It's delicious. And you really want to call me out. Is there more? Did you get you more really... than one drink from Starbucks this morning? <laughs> I shared it with my son, which is why it's in a separate cup. Oh. But I, this is the, uh, I want to call it apple cider, but it's what, it's what they call a steamed caramel apple spice. Oh. It is fall. That is like, you have just given a name to, like, the the middle-aged dad version of Pumpkin Spice Latte. <laughs> the Caramel s- Frap, the one thing I drink from Starbucks. Yes. Yes, white chocolate mocha. It's actually <sighs> really good. Cold brew, uh, cold brew sweet cream is all I've gotten from Starbucks in, like, really? the past five years. They've got so many good options. Yeah, but I have yeah. sugar at home. I don't need their sugar. I could just get, I just want the coffee. <laughs> So, I also like took a play out of your book with a with the metal straw. Listen, a I have that exact straw, the multicolor. I have that yep. exact straw. But look, wait, wait. Do you have do you have the set 
It comes in a little box with like twelve different straws. No. Some of them are bent. Some no. of them are different. I have colors. this. I have this straw. Shout outs to Rook Coffee. This is look. Oh yeah. It's, look, it's quiet. Look, it's, it's rubber. It's synthetic. Mm. I have the exact it's same straw, but in green from Wawa. <laughs> 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 Wawa sold reusable straws if you bought one of their specialties drinks. And it was like an extra 25 cents, Son so I a... bought it. Oh, I know what I'm doing after we get this episode wrapped up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I've also been drinking a lot of Down East ciders. They're delicious. I'm in a big fan. I mean, it's too early for moving... that. This is the middle of September. Like, real soon... I've already been going to customers' houses, and they've got their spiders and ghosts out. I went so. into Lowe's the last weekend in August, and they had the 17-foot skeleton. And I, it was like Atomic August 18th. Sorry. Welcome in, Atomic Blonde. Oh, that's, um... That's, uh... Oh, my gosh. It's, um... Uh, I'm having a total brain fart. I'm not stopping until you get it out. I don't know. JoJo! It's JoJo! <laughs> it's Jojo. Jojo. Oh yeah, it's Jojo. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome in Jojo. I couldn't I couldn't remember if it was Jojo or Mand Amazing because I remember you guys both came into our Discord and you both had names that were not your normal names and I was like <laughs> so confused. Who who are you? Um what have you been playing, Corporal? How rude. Um according to this, I've been playing Love Bug Chaser, Rise of the Old People. Apparently, somebody is messing with me in my show notes. Listen. <laughs> I, if you've been I... listening to the Nintendas long enough, take a shot. Every single time we do show notes, most of our <sighs> show notes are private for us. And I will put some, like, raunchy, dirty, or completely out of left field note randomly in places. A lot of times, it's, it's in what <clears throat> Presto was drinking. Uh, Presto made the show notes for today's episode, and apparently today I've been play I've been playing Love Bug Chaser. And for those of you who don't know, this is Love Bug. Yeah. Season. Oh, JoJo does know. She got that joke. She's in Florida. <laughs> yes. So down here in Florida, we are in Love Bug season, and it is atrocious. Yeah, I've been playing Splatoon. Been so playing have Splatoon I. 3. That's all I've been playing. I've also been playing uh, Coffee Talk with me and Lady Sage at night because it's weird. And unbeknownst to my own self, that sounds weird, Lady Sage has been sneaking onto the Xbox while I'm at work all day and she's been working from home. And in between on her lunch break, she's been playing a lot of Stardew Valley. <laughs> well, I hate to I hate to break it to her. But she is not sneaking because every time she does it, it shows in Discord because Discord is hooked up to your Xbox, Corporal Nosage playing Stardew Valley. <laughs> so all day I look and I'm like, he's Jason not. He work? can't be. He can't be playing Stardew Valley. Like, he, I just talked to him. He's at a customer's <laughs> house. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Splatoon 3 is really lie. good. This was supposed to be a Nintendo Direct slash first impressions review of Splatoon 3, and then I wrote up the notes, and it was just like, no, this this has to be one or the other. So we will have a Splatoon... Uh, we will have a Splatoon 3 episode uh, coming up soon, probably this week. It's like seeing my account on COD. Yeah, we know. You have standards. <laughs> you have standards, Jeremy. He loves Stardew Valley. Yeah, I've never played it. I'm afraid to play it because I've heard it's very addicting. I mean, Atomic knows what's up. I'm I'm not actually yeah. at work. Just I'm, making I'm really... you think he's working. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why does Atomic Blonde's name have a oh watching without audio? Is that a thing? That's impossible because she she can hear us. Obviously, because she's responding to things that unless we're saying. She's, unless she's reading subtitles. Maybe she's got subtitles on. Maybe. That's weird. I've never seen that. I've never I've seen never that I've never seen come that symbol before. next to somebody's name before. Interesting. Twitch trying to call you out. Yeah. And I have I have my sound off all the time when I lurk. No, you can mess with the mods next to your names. Uh-huh. Uh, okay. Making us think you're not listening, but you are. <clears throat> um, okay, let's jump into this direct. Yeah. Um. I have to... Okay, so where do we even start with this? This 
direct. We start with the very first thing that was announced, and that was one of the 94 farming simulators. Oh, so my my notes, I'm just going to read my notes because okay. it's too early right. for me to like figure out a clever way I'm gonna to say this. I'm going to drink my steamed apple juice. <laughs> that is, it's just apple juice. <laughs> you subconsciously know it. It is $5 steamed apple juice. I can make it for you way cheaper. Uh, this direct was kind of a mess. It was kind of a steamed apple spice mess. <laughs> um, it was great if you're a huge fan of uh, farming and life simulators, farming RPG life simulators, um, but it was kind of for everybody else. But, okay, so there's there's a couple parts to this. There's the obvious part that this, uh, this Direct was so much fluff and so much farm simulator and why that is, because there is something that I read, I forget who said it, but it's a very good point. Um, and then there's the other stuff which matters, but the pacing and the overall, like, water to, you know, BS ratio of this direct was sort of a mess. But I think the reason that we're getting all this huge wave of farm simulators is because of a little game called Animal Crossing New Horizons. Animal Crossing New Horizons has sold more than, like, I think it's like the second most sold title on the Switch. It's got 40 million copies sold. And I think that happened right before COVID. Scorpions on the beach. What? I, I So for those of you who are listening to the audio-only version, those who are... We are live streaming this, and we are communicating with the people who are in chat. Uh, Jojo, I actually, I, I don't think I've ever said this on stream, but I actually work in the pest control industry. And in the pest control industry, scorpions have not been a thing that we have had to be trained on or teach our employees about until this year in Florida. Scorpions have been a part of the pest control industry in other states, at least with my company. Um, but in Florida, this is the first year we have started to training employees about scorpions because they suddenly started popping up in Florida. And I don't know why. Just when you thought thing. Florida couldn't get any more Florida. Scarier. <laughs> yep. Flor Florida is just eventually going to turn into Australia. It's just going to float away. <laughs> It's a separate island. I'm so sorry you got stung, though. But the curious part of me wants to know, what was that Jeremy. like? How did you feel? <clears throat> like, did it hurt? Like, how bad was it? It was almost as painful as sitting through this direct. I would <laughs> I would be willing to bet. But no, okay, listen. So Animal Crossing came out right before COVID, right? Like, however many years ago we're at this. Feels like 10 years ago at this point, but it's really more like two and a half. Um, Animal Crossing comes out, goes absolutely bananas, sells 40 million copies. A bunch of developers saw this happen and went, that's it. People want farming slice of life games. And they started production. And we are now living in the time where that like wave of, of Animal Crossing inspired games have been in development are now finally coming out of development and releasing. I think that's why the timing, okay. the timing sets up correctly and animal crossing is still the second most, the second most high, highly sold game on the switch. So the problem that I have is that in this same like time span, we've also had like lawnmower simulator farming simulator uh, there was a, the power wash one did really yeah, well. Yeah, the, pow the power wash simulator. Like there's, and I've played the lawnmower simulator. Let me tell you, it ain't no joke. But uh, I also have uh, farming simulator four. But on these, the those are all PC games. All these yes. games are specifically are for Switch, Switch and are very like cottage core cozy like they're not really yeah. farming they're not farming simulator they're like they're a vibe you control they're, they're yeah all, 
Except for that one, and I, I don't have the list of which farming simulators were out there, but one of the farming simulators was like, and then you can protect your farm from monsters, and then it's like your character is there with a, a sword, and it slashes the bad guy, and it's like a nighttime scene. And that's where I make my joke, like, you gotta fight monsters at various, night, but during the day, you gotta farm. It's various day life. Yeah. I know which one it is. <laughs> I watched. I paid attention. Um, all there right. is day life. You gotta hunt, hunt and kill monsters at night because the sun's not out and you can't farm. But during the day, you get the farm. So, are we talking about Minecraft now? What's happening? <laughs> the original farming, the original farming game. Yes. All yes. right. Let's start. Let's start instead of going from the bottom up. Let's start from the top down. The big things. Number one, Fire Emblem Engage. I've never played a Fire Emblem game. The closest Neither I've I. ever played is I mained Marth for a while in Super Smash Brothers. <laughs> um, but Fire Emblem is a huge, huge series now. Yeah. Um, Fire Emblem uh, Three Houses sold crazy, did so well. I am going to play that game eventually because I've heard enough good things. Fire Emblem Engage being announced and oh, coming yeah, out... Tom. I totally missed the Facebook chat where Tom said goat simulator. Goats. That's so different. <laughs> that's so different, but it's amazing. Um, Fire Emblem and Gage coming out on January 20th, 2023. That's very soon. Yeah. That's very soon for a big game. Like that's Nintendo's new MO is like, we're only going to promote the game Within the last three months. Yeah, three months before its release. Yep. Um, we got news about a new Splatfest. If you were stuck on a desert island, would you be Team Gear, Team Grub, or Team Fun? If you are participating in the Splatfest, you know Nintendad's got to be Team Fun. Ah, fun. Or Team Fun. We like to Nick be Yeti. on the island and have fun. Nick Yeti made a good point. <laughs> As our, as our resident survival expert, he said the most important thing that you can go into a survival situation with is a positive mental attitude. And to have a positive mental attitude, you got to have a little fun. Food, yeah, food runs fine. out. Gear can be made in scavenged. But fun, that lives here in your heart. It comes from within. <laughs> and from and from various decks of cards in game board in game board games so and like that. Going across both chats, a lot of people have mentioned Goat Simulator. I'll be honest with you, I have tried to play Goat Simulator many times. Sarah, welcome I in. Don't understand. If you don't, don't understand, know, then you understand perfectly. You're I a don't goat. Know what the, I don't know what the the point is. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. You're a goat. I don't know goat. what direction I have. I don't even know what my button combinations are. Like, I don't know You're a anything. goat. You sow chaos, and you get <laughs> points. The more things you mess up, the more points you get. You Now you understand Goat Simulator. Uh, okay. It's a sandbox game, and by sandbox, I mean goat box. It's a goat in a sandbox. I'm just going to drink my coffee and be quiet. Um, Pikmin 4. So, somewhere, somewhere, somebody's excited about this. I loved Pikmin back in the day. Yeah, it was cool back in the day, but, like, it's not a game that I would ever be like, oh, they made it again? Because it's like, they don't, I don't know. There's been three Pikmin, they've been I, so the received Pikmin story, well. The Pikmin story and the, the franchise is actually kind of interesting. And the original concept for why Pikmin are there and w or why the the astronaut landed on the planet and like trying to survive and everything else like it's a it's a very interesting story and as a game I think it does really well for the Switch. What I don't understand is why they made a Pikmin Niantic G Pokemon Go style game. That that was my favorite part about that announcement because they <laughs> brought Miyamoto. The creator of, of Mario. We haven't seen this man in a direct in a pretty long time. Yeah, they brought the him out. You're like, like a vampire. He's sleeping somewhere. They're like, oh my god, Miyamoto. Are we getting? Are we getting a new Mario game? Is there a new Mario game coming out? There hasn't been one in like five years. Oh my god, it's Miyamoto. Then Miyamoto continues to to shill the <laughs> Pikmin mobile game for like what feels like a half an hour. It's probably like three minutes. Yeah. But, like, it was a dedicated segment on this free game that came out, like, two years ago that I don't really <coughs> think anybody plays that Niantic probably paid through the nose on licensing for. 
And they're probably like, please help us. <laughs> and then he goes, he talks about uh, Pikmin, was it Pikmin Full Bloom, I think it's called? Uh, or Pikmin yeah. Bloom, Pikmin Bloom. They He talks about it, and then at the end, he's like, oh yeah, Pikmin <laughs> 4 is coming. Someday. <laughs> So that's it. I I am a big Harry Potter fan. Um, I, I live in Orlando. We've got the Universal and the Hogwarts Castle and everything here. I've read all the books. That's I've why the Scorpions the are coming. <laughs> I've watched all the movies. Um, we're at the age with the kids where we're starting to read the stories with the kids now, so they can learn the magic and like. Yay, Harry Potter. Harry Potter Legends, whatever, is coming soon. Yeah, yeah. And I'm so excited about it. So I wanted to dig deeper into the Harry Potter world and get myself ready and amped up. So I went to go download the Harry Potter Niantic game. Oh. No. Niantic pulled it from the shops. Yeah, it's not around anymore. I played it when it released, too. I played it a lot. So... I'm sitting here going, you pulled Harry Potter, but you produced Pikmin? Like, you have got to be kidding me. I mean, I think I think Pikmin is only being held up by, like, the fact that, like, Nintendo will probably be like, you're not shutting this down. It's R.I.P. <laughs> we will continue to push this zombie down the road until everybody forgets about it, and then we'll put it in. Oh. Hagashi Studios, welcome Studios, in. Studios, welcome Peeking in. in. I like, I like your creeping <laughs> emoji. Um, yeah. So Pikmin Four is coming out. Now we're gonna get into the real, no, the real was, important. That was things. so rude of us. What? Person's like, person's like, hi, and we're like, and we're oh, like, oh, are you? Look. <laughs> you think you can lurk here? Um, okay. Now this, these next two things are what I consider to be the biggest parts of the direct okay right so they're like oh new titles coming to nintendo 64 pilot wings okay sure. mario party one two and three yes good games pokemon stadium one and two i could care less about two but one totally yes. worth it yes um 1080 snowboarding, cool. Excite Light yep. 64. Actually, cool. I remember sitting in Nikki Eddie's living room way back in the day playing the snowboarding. 1080, game, so. yeah. I was more of an SSX tricky, but that was on GameCube. So <laughs> I'll have to wait another 10 years for them to get that out. Um, and then, brr, possibly the biggest thing to come out of this direct GoldenEye? GoldenEye with online play? What? What? This came out of nowhere. I this has been it's been rumored for a while. It was rumored that it was coming to Xbox, and it is coming to Xbox. Yes, fate literally fate right behind me. Goldeneye is also coming to Xbox. There's so many questions I have. A is it going to be cross platform with Xbox? Uh, I uh, so. The, the moment I found out that it was coming to Xbox, I was like, so uh, let me let backtrack. Nintendo Direct announces that GoldenEye is coming with online play. In my truck watching this video, I immediately said, oh, ooh, that might be worth online plus. Oh, that, mm, there it is. Uh, there it is. Ever because since dude, you can't buy it. You can't no. buy it. You have to do the online. Ever since they announced the the uh, online ex package or whatever expansion, I have been bashing it. I've been like, there's not enough there. It's not worth it. Those games are subpar. Eh, some of these games are okay. Eh, yeah, I like those, but it's not worth it. Eh, those games are great. I really love them, but they're not worth me spending the money. Mm. Now I don't know Mario Party and <laughs> Goldeneye, like even the Banjo Kazooie when they announced the Banjo Kazooie, and I'm a huge Banjo fan. But you have it on like, another platform. I, yeah, I have it on Xbox, like whatever. But Goldeneye. Mm. But yeah, then I found Tom. Out Tom to X said the same thing. I, then I found that it's coming to Xbox, and I was like, <laughs> so the question is, will it have will it have cross platform play? I doubt it. I I absolutely doubt it. Because 
because the the sixty four emulations within uh within the the Switch have their own weird system for playing online with people that other people that are on the Switch. So I don't think yeah. this is gonna have the biggest. So the biggest thing is. The, Nintendo is known for doing an absolute train wreck of a job with online stuff. See, even TS Villa, Tom was like, yeah. I said that too, Corporal Online Expansion. I, I am <laughs> wondering, I am wondering how good or bad this online is going to be. Yep. I also think, and this is going to be an absolute unpopular hot take, okay? So don't please nobody throw anything at their at their screens i think everybody is going oh golden eye oh my god they're gonna boot it up they're gonna play it for 10 minutes and they're gonna be like this oh yeah uh i remember playing this and my rose colored glasses are coming off now because compared to every other shooter golden eye is going to feel incredibly slow and clunky yes if you if you play literally any shooter that's come out in the last twenty years, you're gonna go back to Goldeneye and you're gonna be like, you're gonna be this is gonna be you running through archive looking for the one friend that you're playing with. <laughs> like I just think people are gonna be very surprised because I haven't played Goldeneye in fifteen years. So, and everybody kind of remember it, remembers it, rightfully so, as, like, the golden, you know, first-person shooter. But, ah, uh, I guess you with the popcorn. I think people are going to go back to it and be like, oh, like, this was, this is fun to do for, like, a night, like, drinking and having fun with some buddies. Um, <laughs> I can't wait to hear the heavy breathing when you get shot. <laughs> um, but I think people are going to play it a couple times and then be like okay the detail on that is great okay it's such a small thing that like Tom right would, like call that out do you have ptsd my heart <laughs> my heart rate literally increases whenever i hear any of those noise it's the og shooter but a lot's changed yeah uh, not only has a lot changed but i also feel like to your point it is such an old style shooter like the only thing that really makes that particular game unique in its field were like the traps, the 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 motion mines and the proximity mines and things like that. Yeah. So I I feel like there will be a flood of people to play it, but to your point, I don't think it'll have much more than like an eight month lifespan before player. Just yeah, nobody off. really cares. We are absolutely doing a Golden Eye night when it comes out, though. I don't but that care. Means I, have to, I have to get PlayStation Plus expansion pass for one night. Looks like it. <laughs> <laughs> that is what you said it, not me. That seems like a that seems like a pretty reasonable deduction. <laughs> Please subscribe. Please subscribe so Corporal can afford to get the expansion. We need your help th so that Corporal can play odd job. Odd job. <laughs> and facility, yes. Um, okay, I'm gonna let you, I have to let you introduce the last, the last real bit of, of food in this direct. A part of me was going to take my shirt off and put on a Zelda shirt just for this moment, but... But it's uh, too I'll, early for all I'll that. I'll spare you my nakedness. <laughs> and so, us dodging another band by the skin <laughs> of our teeth. Uh... So, mm. the, are we all, rumors had been going around for months now that there was going to be a Zelda release or, or some sort of leak. Everybody thought this whole Direct was going to be a Zelda Direct. Yeah. They thought we were yes. going to get a bunch of ports and then gameplay from the new game. Honestly, I would have been happier with that instead of the farming simulators. <laughs> so, I have a lot of things to say about Zelda and you I'm sure will have to to rein me in here and give your input but this Zelda game in particular was conceptualized as a DLC game 
Yeah, started as DLC, and they were just it like, started oh. started as a, as a Breath, Breath of the Wild DLC, and they have admittedly said that their concept for the DLC became so large that they didn't think that it was worth releasing as a DLC, that they were going to release it as a separate game. Flamey, what's up? Welcome in the chat. Welcome in. So, when that was announced, I immediately had concerns. Immediately. And then the trailer came out. Let me tell you, that trailer had some pretty strong Majora's Mask vibes. And yeah, it was dark. Lot. It was dark, it was gritty, it was cave, it was scary, it was Zombie, zombie Ganon, yeah. There was like, you also had all of the fan base, we had the first trailer, thinking that you could play as Zelda and as Link, or both, or switching back and forth. Now see, co-op, we've talked about this, co-op for this game, if you could play through it in co-op with a friend, that would be an instant selling point for me. Groundbreaking. Absolutely groundbreaking for a Zelda series. Other than the, the four links, or whatever it was called. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Minish, Minish Cap, I think it was. Where you had the four different colored links, and yeah. you could use each other for whatever. So, uh, then... They released another gameplay footage, and I, around the same time they released the gameplay footage, they also released Skyward Sword. If you've watch, been watching us long enough, take a shot, you will remember that I had said Skyward Sword has a very natural concept for Breath of the Wild, and or they could go in the other direction um, and flood the entire kingdom with water. And do the other Zelda game, either Skyward Sword or um, New Hot and Flamey. Thank you guys for liking the stream. What was what was the uh, the Zelda game? It was a spin-off game. It was the cartoon game where everything was flooded. Oh, I Wind Waker, Wind Waker. Yes, Wind Waker. That's what, so. Either Skyward Sword or Wind Waker, and they could flood the Breath of the Wild Kingdom with water, and that would be the concept for the game. Or they could blow it up and do a Skyward Sword thing with floating islands. So when we saw that second trailer, I thought it was going to be a Skyward Sword. And I'll be honest with you, Skyward Sword's a pretty good game. I was very excited by it, but from what we saw in the gameplay footage, I did not think it was going to be enough. It very much felt like a DLC. It's I was starting, very disappointed. We're starting to enter that stage where it's like... They keep showing, like, yes, you're going to be falling. You're going to be going up into the sky, and then you're going to be falling down. We get it. What else you got? And that's that was my point. They started this particular, this, this Nintendo Direct, this Zelda uh, thing, with what I felt like was very much of the same footage. Like, yeah. yes, we got a little bit here and there. Yes, we got to see that Link had something on his belt. Yes, we got to see some different areas... But it still felt the same thing. I'm waiting to see the dark. Where's the Majora Mask theme? Where's the zombie Ganon? Where's Zelda? Where's the cave? Like, where's that, I that think, first trailer? I think, I think, yeah, I think it started as this was going to be the Majora's Mask to Ocarina of Time. Like, it was yes. going to have that style of relationship. But... They I changed it. I think I think the the direction of development may have changed and it may be going more towards Skyward Sword. And I don't I never played Skyward Sword. I've played limited amount of Majora's Mask. Ocarina of Time was my jam. Played most of Wind Waker, Breath of the Wild. I haven't gotten all the way through. I'm I'm nowhere near as big of a Zelda fan as you are. Um but from what I can see in my limited experience, it looks like it is. They're like, what if we, what if we skyward sorted Breath of the Wild? <laughs> like that's that seems to be what's going on for me. So then the logo came up, and they gave us Tears of a Kingdom. Now, logos and titles like. For a Zelda series, Majora's Mask, like, very much played into the concept of the game. Ocarina of Time, very much played into the storyline of the game. Skyward Sword, 
very much played into the concept of the game. I don't know where Tears of the Kingdom is coming from. The flood. It could be. I, it really could be going back to your flood idea. Maybe, and maybe it is. Maybe they are taking Skyward Sword and Wind Waker and somehow doing this dirty amalgamation of Breath of the Wild. Like, I, I'm interested. Uh, but you keep showing me the same footage over and over again that I don't because know. Because that's all they can show. That's all they have. I don't know if I've got faith. But they ended that, that segment with a release date. And I'll be honest with you, I did not uh, see that I know. release date coming. I thought release date was going to be end of summer slash fall. Maybe holiday of next year. I'll be honest with you, though. If Breath of the Wild is any indication, we're probably going to have more delays. They can't delay it again. They put a date. They put a date. They can't do that. I feel like... If you... Listen, if you... Chat, I feel like they gave a date for Breath of the Wild, too. No, they gave a year. Oh, uh, okay. If you, right. if you put... If you say it's coming out this season or this thing, and then you push it back, and then you push it back, and then, like, the third time you give a date, they're not changing that date. They'll, they'll ship it unfinished. Uh, before they delay it again. I mean, ever since, uh, probably even before COVID, but I, I feel like shipping a game before it's released or before it's finished is become a very common thing. Yeah, not Cyberpunk, for Nintendo. Not, not, Nintendo, not for first-party Nintendo. Cyberpunk 77 is is a probably the world's biggest like recognition of that, but there have been so many games prior. No Man's Sky. Such... No Man's Sky is up there, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Which, by the way, we I, I glossed over this. I forgot to say this in the what we're playing section. I've been playing Cyberpunk again because I've been watching the Netflix series, uh, Cyberpunk yeah. Edgerunners. Cyberpunk Edgerunners is so good. It is so good. If you even like Cyberpunk a little bit, uh, watch Edgerunners. And Cyberpunk 2077, I popped into the Reddit. They are back... They're back up at, like, the peak amount of people that have been playing Cyberpunk. They're back up to, like, 50,000 concurrent players on Steam alone because of the because of the Netflix anime. I'm fully, like, reinvested in Cyberpunk. I don't have any time to play it between Splatoon and Splatoon. And <laughs> I'm, I'm two weeks behind on my Monster Hunter uh, Sunbreak... Uh, quests event quests which we're talking about the nintendo direct but we're gonna have a uh, content update too with some very fiery spicy new monsters in sunbreak um that's not really what this episode is about but flaming espinas risen camellios violet mizutsune like there's a lot of really really juicy end game stuff coming to sunbreak at the end of this month i had to i had to just throw that in there but yes uh is that, oh are we doing the side quest now we're, we're gonna we're gonna drop that side quest all right now so those of you i i'm going to start doing this for now on for those of you who've been listening to our channel long enough take another shot that's your third shot of the day ring 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 um we do a segment within our episodes that's called side quest chun side question Side question, side quest. See the, the play of words there? I, I thought it was clever. Anyway, so so we do this side quest on every episode, and I, I'm going to we start... We need to start in, building it into the Facebook editor, because you can put polls up live. Yes! Here, yes. you you talk about it. I'm going to see if I can figure out how to do that really quickly. Real quick. So I am going to try to do better, now that we've got the streaming thing set up, that whenever we do a side quest, we incorporate the side quest not only to ourselves as a part of the episode, but to you, our viewers. So I've included the side quest in chat for those of you to talk. Presto's going to see if he can do polls. Fate Maker says you can do polls on Twitch too, so we're going to need to do a crash course on that as well. Um, but we're going to, I'd like to get your guys' feedback from this. But with all this talk of Zelda, how absolutely amazing and groundbreaking Breath of the Wild was for the Switch and for the Zelda series as a whole. I'm curious if you think Zelda Tears of the Kingdom 
is going to be worth it. What you have seen so far, is it a buy for you? And I'm very curious what everybody in chat has to say. But for me, it's a Zelda game. I'm gonna buy it. Like, period. Will I have enough time to play it? The way I was able to play Breath of the Wild? Mm. But I assure you that if I have to do a separate stream just like on Sunday nights while I'm laying in bed, I will play it. <laughs> <laughs> you should. But you should do I, that with the, with the phone cam. The phone cam on my face up against my pillow and be like, hi guys. Lady Sage is sleeping, so yeah. we're going to go fight this bad guy now. This is the <laughs> ASMR. <laughs> I So, early back in the day, I had talked about Presto us doing an ASMR segment of our show. Because I, I feel like there's a lot of people who would enjoy that. I, I don't know. You, you can tell me. We need more Thirst Trap people in chat to even, like, respond to that type of garbage, but... <laughs> So presto, my side quest, Chon, for you is what you have seen so far. Haha! Is I figured out is, the whole thing. Is Breath of the Wild worth it for you? Um. Oh, did I mess it? I think I messed it up. I don't know. Can somebody tell me if it's coming up on on Facebook? They Facebook I, totally changed where you do it. I don't see it. Um. Um, uh, yeah, it's letting me save it, but it's not create poll. There. I thought it might be up. I don't know. Um, uh, the short answer is no. Long answer is no. Um, really? I so I am not at no at no point have I been like Breath of the Wild too. Um, I was interested, and it's really cool that they're making it. I have Breath of the Wild back there, and it's been in there for a long time. There's probably dust on it. I never played all the way through Breath of the Wild. It's a really good game, but. I have periods of where I'll play it, and then honestly, I'll hit a dungeon, and I'll get bored and stop playing it. And then every time I'll go to play it, I'll just be like, oh, that's right, I'm in this dungeon. Uh, I just want to run around and explore, but I also don't want to like lose my spot in the dungeon, so I'll just, I'll just play it later when I'm in the mood to do the dungeon, and then I just don't play it. So I feel like Dean is at a, your, your son is at a great point in his life that he could learn the concepts and controls on Breath of the Wild. and I He think loves he to watch it. me play it, but he he got this for his birthday, and this is all he wants to play now. Yeah. So. I mean, it's a great game. Um, which I didn't know this had two-player functionality where one person could control yeah. the hat. Yep. So that's Actually, cool. that, I, I think when that game came out, Nick Yeti was still a part of our podcast initially. Um, those of you who have been listening to us long enough, to do ch Ah, uh, uh, I found it. Activate poll. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Yeti, Yeti had talked about how it is a... Oh, yeah, there it is. It popped up on stream. There we go. Vote on your phones. Um, Thor Yeti, Ragnarok does look really good. Yeti had talked about how it's, it's two-player functionality, and him, his son Lance, would play it. Yeah. So, now, if they said... If they say tomorrow, they say Breath of the Wild has two-player co-op, 100% pre-order, like, full release, I'm on board. Because oh, that's something new. If they included Zelda as a playable character, if they included Zelda as a playable character and it became two-player co-op, I would strong-arm you into saying we're going to be playing Zelda instead of uh, any other game. It'll instead be of what? For now. Instead of what co-op that we're definitely never <laughs> going to be able to play? I mean, ah, Pokemon's coming out, so I can't say yes. much. Yes. Yeah. But 
like we'll have to do. I, I will have to talk to your wife and force her to allow Sunday co streams because we'll have to have Pokemon. Two Pokemon's going to be a lot of fun. Um, okay, we'll have to have two co streams. So, so Zelda and Gold and I were really the high points. I have this, so I have my notes for this direct separated into uh, real stuff that we care about, semi fluff that's like normal newsworthy worthy and then fluff fluff so the semi fluff well i'm going to go through kind of quickly and we can kind of just make the offhand comments um it takes two coming to switch uh it's a good game it's if a good you game played it, you should speaking play it. of co-op yeah i know it's a big deal it got like co-op game of the year or like so i know it got a, a lot of awards when it came out so not only that but the story of it takes two is about a marriage, a family, a, a husband and a wife who are falling apart. And they, through magic and means of a child, get put into these dolls and are forced to work together and learn how to work together and ultimately save their relationship. Like, it is a deeper story than just two little figurines that... Yeah running around i'm like, glad they didn't go with the original title for the game which was called marriage counselor simulator <laughs> i'm really glad they went with it takes two definitely catchier and less specific um so that's coming out that that looks pretty cool octopath traveler 2 this almost went in the main <coughs> section octopath traveler was huge hit octopath traveler 2 probably also going to be huge hit i never played it it looks like a really cool game not my style of game, but quality, I would say. Um, yeah, I have trying to promote Pikmin Bloom, shelling out Miyamoto, yeah. Um, Sifu! Sifu is coming to Switch. So do you, do you know this game? No. So Sifu is a game, it's a, it's a kung fu action game, uh, where you're, you're a kung fu master... And you start out young. You start out, like, in your teens or whatever. And you're, I think it's like, sort of avenge your father who is assassinated or something. And oh, I it's like got, the art style. It's got really smooth animation. It's got a really in-depth, complex combat system. Um, but when you die, you're dead. That's it. So it's kind of like a roguelike in this way. But yeah. every time you die, your character ages one year. And the Ooh. older you get, the stronger you get, but you have less health. Oh. So by the end of the game, you're just this little old man that's like, wah, and like punching holes through people. But if anybody breathes on you, you're dead. And then eventually you get so old that the game is, your run is over. Oh, I want to play this game now. Right? Right. This is interesting. Yeah, it's cool. That's a really cool concept. It's I very like cool. That's why I'm surprised style. you hadn't heard of it. I love the art style of this. So my only critique of it coming to Switch, and, and it might just be the art style, to me when they showed it, it looked like a PlayStation 2 game. Um, <laughs> and I've seen it on other platforms and it looks good, but the, the Switch version, the, uh, the art style might carry it through. But it's it's just important that it plays smooth. But to me, it looked a little bit dated. Okay. But we'll see. Right. I didn't write so down much, the release date for it. I'm sorry. So much for a quick run of this this list, but go on. <laughs> yeah. Bayonetta 3, again, tons of people have a kink Love where they want to the be Bayonetta. stepped on by a mommy figure. Not for me, but a lot of people, a I, lot of people like that. I thought you said kink. And then I was like, he didn't say kink. And then I let you finish talking. And you definitely said mommy. You can't, stepping. you can't. I mean, it's Bayonetta. Like, it's not. It's, if you it watch our channel is. for the dad bod jokes, I mean, this, this was bound to come out, I guess. Bayonetta 3 definitely appeals to a lot of people for a lot of different reasons. The gameplay is good. The gameplay is good, but it is, it is not my style, but. It's a big deal that it's coming out because it's the third game in the series and people like it. And so... You took a sip of your coffee. There it is. And I was like, I have a mug that's just like that. But it's bigger. And then my entire mind just went on this like gag that we can play throughout stream while we keep taking a sip. 
starts off really small and the mug just keeps getting bigger right? each time. Right, eventually I'm just like... <laughs> I mean, that's how I felt <coughs> sitting through this direct. I'm like, I need a gallon of coffee injected into my veins. Yep. Um, Crisis Core. Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core Remastered. So this was a game that came out on the PlayStation Portable... And I yep. almost bought a PlayStation Portable or borrowed one to play this because this goes through the story of Zack in Final Fantasy, like before Cloud is a character. And uh, there's a there's a solid chance that I will pick this up. Yes, Fate! I beat Crisis Core on PSP. Yes. So this is really cool. I know, though, I know if I play Crisis Core... That's going to be the hook that gets me to buy the the 7 remake on PC. And there's like a very long list of games that I have that I want to play when there's not games like Monster Hunter and Pokemon and Splatoon coming out. Um, like a backlog of stuff that I haven't bought. The 7 remake is on that backlog. Neon White is on that backlog, which they showed... I think they showed something for neon white in this oh no they didn't it's just on sale right now um but crisis core looks good um tunic tunic is this have you heard of this one no it is basically fox zelda it's like a little okay. fox it's like a little fox character and it looks exactly like old school zelda games like if you if you look it up if you haven't seen it I think you'll I think you'll recognize it once you see it, but it's basically like it's just it's just it's a Zelda but you're a fox and it's got some cool little mechanics in there and it looks really cool and it, I was very surprised that it didn't come out for Switch when it released. Uh huh. I think the graphic fidelity was probably a little bit high, so they had to tone it down for the Switch. But it looks cool if you're a fan of old school Zelda games. Tunic looks really good. Um. Mario Rabbids Spark of Hope is about to release. It's another Mario Rabbids game. Mario Strikers update is getting a second DLC with Pal uh, Paulina from uh, Mario Odyssey and Diddy Kong. There's more gear. There's new stadium. And in my notes, I just put lipstick on a pig. <laughs> Which... Wow. Strikers has come out. I think if you care about Strikers, you care about Strikers, but the majority of people got lost at the demo like we did. I remember we streamed that demo, and I was like, oh yeah, Mario Strikers, and then we played the demo, and I was like, nope. so when's Splatoon coming out? <laughs> Nintendo Switch Sports Golf added to the courses for Wii Sports from Wii Sports, though so they took the Wii Sports and they brought it over to the Nintendo <sighs> Switch Sports. I'll be honest with you, I it's... like... <sighs> I like the Wii Sports back in the day, but I don't know anybody who plays that stuff now. No, and it's like, they even, it's just copy and pasted from Wii Sports. Yeah. And why that's not a, that's not a terrible idea, because everybody loved Wii Sports, like, you can't be like, oh, there's big things coming out, and our first update is stuff you played ten years ago. Yeah. So I I put I put Mario Strikers and Switch Sports very much in the same bucket of sports themed games that had very disappointing releases that I probably would play like in a social setting, but I would never like get on my own. Um, Kirby Returned to Dreamland Deluxe. That was I believe that was on the 3DS. Uh, and it's coming. It's a Kirby game. It's, like, one of the last truly, like, really good 2D Kirby games. I know, okay. uh, I know Forgotten Kingdom is pretty good, but this is, like, the style of Kirby that I grew up with, so I might pick that up on sale for me to play through with, um, with my son at some point. Flamey Darklight or, uh, uh, Hygiene Studios both mentioned, uh, Kirby. Kirby, yes. Yeah, the new the Kirby Deluxe. I've never played it, so I might play through it. Kirby Dream Land 2 was my jam on the Game Boy. Uh, so I never played Return to Dream Land, but it's a, it's a possibility. Um, and then Mario Kart, of course, getting more new courses ported from 
the mobile game. Which, at this point, Mario Kart 8 is coming out to be one of the beefiest Mario Kart games ever. I don't know how they would do another Mario Kart series. They're going to have to... They're going to have to add a, a new element. It's going to be the same thing as Pokemon, where it's like you had Pokemon, 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 and then you had Arceus, and it's like, oh, shit, open world. This is amazing. They're going to have to reboot. I think they're taking everything in the kitchen sink and dumping it in because the next Mario Kart that's going to come out is going to be... It's. I don't think it's going to be Mario Kart 9. I think it's going to be Mario Kart Infinite, and it's going to okay. have... Or Mario Kart Ultimate, or Mario Kart, like, Street Mushrooms, race. or something. Yeah, Street Race. <laughs> it's going to be some sort of thing where it's not just another thing in the series. It's going to bring some totally new things to the formula, and it's going to be something that they can pump content into over time. Literally what Halo They're... Infinite was, or it was supposed to be. Yeah. Jessica, thank you for liking the stream. Um, I think they're going to release it and it's going to be more akin to a live service race game than, uh, than just a sequel, which would be interesting. All of that that we've discussed so far is a lot for a Nintendo Direct, but (laughs) there's more. (laughs) So, yeah. So here's, here's the question that I'll ask even before we get into the real fluff. Obviously, this Direct was bad, was considered to be pretty bad, pretty painful, very overstuffed and underwhelming. But if the Direct was just everything that we had talked about, would it have been good? If it was if it was a 40-minute Direct and these sections were beefed up a little bit, or if it was a 20-minute Direct with Zelda, Pikmin, Octopath Traveler, Kirby... Um, New Splatfest information, Goldeneye, Fire Emblem. I think if it was just those items, we would be having a different conversation, being like, yo, that Direct had so much stuff. It had so much actual stuff that mattered. But because it was like a nugget of awesome surrounded by 10 minutes of stuff nobody really cares about, I think it changed the vibe. I agree. And uh, JoJo boxing fitness game, endless dungeon roguelike, weird dodge game, SpongeBob game. Yes, now you're like, reading through the fluff. Like these things are things that you maybe list at the end of a direct. Like and more. <laughs> this is why. So so this is why we have partner directs. This is why we have indie directs. Like, 60% of what was in this Direct belonged somewhere else. I'm not saying that nobody cares about stuff, because JoJo has a huge following. Rune Factory 3, amazing. Uh, You know, all the Resident Evil stuff. Those all have places. I'm not saying that nobody cares about them and they're not important. But you can't can't put them next to Zelda. They don't belong in the same spot. These are partner. These are indie games. This is, as as always, I will make my uh, metaphor with food. Oh, so, here we go again. if I have some, like, delicious, like, seasoned meat, let's go with, uh, I don't know, like, carne asada, or some, like, very flavorful spiced meat, right? What are you making faces? Nothing. And so, if I, have, if I have delicious, like, steak or chicken, or something that's really, really flavorful. I make it with some vegetables. Like, I don't really cook, but, like, if I could cook. And I made this delicious meal, right? Those flavors are there, and they're delicious. That's the Zelda. That's the Golden Eye. Those are the big things that we talked about first. Okay, now we're going to add a scoop of rice to this, as is common with that. You know, you have your, you know, burrito bowl or whatever. You add some rice. The rice is... It takes two, Octopath Traveler, Sifu, Bayonetta, Crisis Core, Tunic, all the other things that we talk about, Kirby. Those are, that's a balanced meal right there. You have the rice, you have the flavor, it's delicious. But what Nintendo did was they added two entire more cups of rice to their meal. And now 
you have a bowl that's mostly rice and every couple of bites you're going to get some of that delicious flavor but overall the entire meal is going to feel pretty bland and i think that's exactly what happened here if it was just the flavor on its own it would have been delicious but after watching this direct i just feel bloated and unsatisfied boom fork okay. fork drop fork drop fork drop so let's let's play a little game. Let, let's try to read through this fluff in alternating things. So you read one, I'll read one, you read one, I read one. Okay. Okay. Start start with SpongeBob. First of all, and that this is another note. So many of these digital games now have pre-orders. Why? What, the pre-orders used to be Order it at GameStop so we don't run out of copies and we have a guaranteed copy review. There's no point in pre-ordering digital copies of things. Yeah. Other than to give them money to do marketing stuff with. But somehow it's become a thing. Anyway. Okay. You ready? I suppose. All right. And a comment. If you have a comment about it. Okay. All right. A lot of this direct was definitely not aimed at the hardcore gamer damage. yes but that's the uh, thing is some of it was that's the meat welcome in the by meat? the way the meat the, meat. <laughs> the delicious flavor was there but then they put too much rice classic blunder yep <laughs> so i weird dodgeball game no comment xenoblade dlc wait wait I wait know. we're gonna alternate we're gonna alternate no, i'm i'm going <laughs> xenoblade dlc like, I like the Xenoblade series. Big, big I've, deal to some people, I'm sure. Yeah, but not to us. And quite frankly, it's a DLC. I hope it's a good DLC for those of you who like the game. <laughs> Endless Dungeon Roguelike. Thoughts on this? Uh, I thought this might have possibility, but I think Nick Yeti played it. And as our resident roguelike expert, he was like, no, it looks good, but it's not good. So <sighs> that's all I need to hear. We talked about JoJo boxing. Like. Bye. Okay. okay. Front Mission remake? Uh, people care about that. It's like an old school, respectable, like, mech sort of thing. So, like, great. That's cool. That would probably be something I put in, like, a partner direct. Um, Farm Game Simulator 1? Oh, Fay Farm. <laughs> sure. Number one. All right. If you like fairies and farming, that's... There you go. Story of Seasons Farm Game? Like uh, okay. also um another farm game. I don't know what the differences are because there's it's one farm game out of many farm games. So speaking of this again, various day life, another farm game. Various day life, maybe the only farm game in the direct that add real combat. But that yep. that I I lost it when I heard that because it was like <laughs> the sixth farm game they talked about, and they were just like various day life, and I thought they were describing another farm game like you're gonna do things like that you would do in your various day life and then they said it again and i realized that that was the title mm -hmm. and i was like that is that's so funny that'd be like if call of duty came out with another game and they were just like call of duty gritty military shooter and that was the title of the game like how are you gonna name a i mean it's it's like they're not even trying anymore they're just like yeah Oh, Story of Seasons used to be Harvest Moon. Ah, okay. I didn't know that. Okay. So there's another farm game. Another farm game. Although <laughs> Harvest Moon, Harvest Moon is pretty legit. That was like the original RPG farm game. So that one gets some respect. Yeah. The other ones. Sorry, you're not Animal Crossing. I'm I mean, trying. yeah. Um theater theater rhythm game it looks like a rhythm game with like music from every genre and every game series ever so honestly for those people who are huge into like rock band and uh like beat saber and like those types of things i feel like this game has its place and yeah oh if brings... you're a rhythm game fan it looks good it definitely brings that type of genre to this platform, which there currently isn't a huge, there's a void to fill. So I admit that, like, it is a good concept. It just doesn't appeal to me. Graptacular said that Theater Rhythm was really good on the 3DS. Okay. 
Yeah, I mean, if it if it did good on the 3DS, it's going to do great on the Switch because it's got the yeah. same like handheld appeal. Yep. Um, uh, Factorio, Factorio. I think that's like farm game, but instead of farm, you're doing like a factory. So like <laughs> after the products leave the farm, they go to the factory, and then you play this game. Um, Ib. You get it's like an indie game that you, now when I saw Ib, Ib is like. You're this girl, you go into an art museum, you get lost, you go on this magical narrative-driven adventure. This, to me, is like, how is this not in an indie direct? This is like yes. exactly what I would expect from, from an, indie, an indie game. Why is it here? Like, I feel like they were like, we almost have enough to do an indie direct, but we're just going to mash it in with... Which watered with down the major content yes, that they Yes, too had. much rice! So Just Dance 2023, the Just Dance series is a very popular series, and there's a lot of people who I know who like these games and like the music that they provide on the console. I, great. That's spectacular. You're not going to see me dancing on stream, but it's good mm, for the 14 I wouldn't year say that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't <laughs> say that. You never know where our sub goals will take us. Oh, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Don't um, make me dance on stream. <laughs> Uh, Harvest, Harvest Stella. I don't know why I have feels like this direct next to Harvest Stella. I'm guessing it was just like because it's another it's farming another simulator. Farm simulator, yeah. <laughs> Rain um, code f from the makers of uh, Dragon Rampa. Dongan Rampa. So Dongan Rampa Dongan. is a very popular, like I don't know what the it's like a graphic novel type RPG where you have to like figure out the murderers and stuff. So okay. that's probably going to be huge because Danganronpa is huge. Um, so that will probably be a big thing. I don't know anything about it, but it's probably going to be big. Um, Resident Evil Village Biohazard 2 and 3 are coming to Switch. Asterix, the cloud version. Cloud version. So I like the Resident Evil series. I have never played a cloud version game on the Switch, so I really don't know how they work and how well they work. But Lady Sage and I love during the October season to pick out, like, a, we literally have a running list of horror movies, horror games, horror board games, and horror books. And throughout the month, we will, each day of the week, kind of dabble into each one at the end of our night is our like nightly routine with each other. So like this just adds another platform that we're able to do these things on. Unfortunately for people who have multiple consoles, I feel like this is a little too little too late because you probably, if you like these series and want to play these games already have them on another platform. Yeah. I mean, this is for people who only have a switch and who yeah. haven't played these games uh, bad news is it comes out on October 28th, so you're going to be hard-pressed to squeeze these into October. Yeah. I I don't support cloud versions of games because of a couple reasons. Number one, if you go to play a cloud game and there's too many people trying to play the cloud game, you have to literally wait in line to play a game that you paid full price for. Number one. Number two, you have to be online to play it. If you don't have an internet connection, you can't play the game that you paid for. Again, not cool. Three, whenever they decide to shut down the servers and support for this game, your your ownership of this game has effectively ended. Because mm -hmm. in, in, in 10 years, I could take Breath of the Wild and put it in my Switch and play it. In 10 years, I can go to the Resident Evil Biohazard cloud version and it's going to say... No, go buy the Switch 2 and buy the new thing, and it's just it's just not going to work. So, and it's like if you have a bad connection, there could be stuttering, there could be performance issues, if you get disconnected, like, there's just too many things that are not good about cloud version games for me to ever even consider them. If it was, like, free with your Nintendo expansion, yes, Perfect. That's where these belong. Not forty dollars to play a game that you have to be online for that will one day evaporate. Like you either need to make a significant price reduction or have it be a part of a live service thing. 
otherwise, I don't think there's a, a big place for live service game or uh, cloud versions on the Switch. I don't like it. Not happy about it. I really want there to be some information coming out about Disney Speedstorm. Yay, and showed I'm, it! They showed I'm, it, and that was it! I'm on the wish list for it, but... I had high hopes, and then they just stopped promoting it, which means that it's going to be terrible to me. I think it's going to mm-hmm. be another Chocobo, Chocobo yeah. GP situation where it's like, it's the Mario Kart killer, and then they'll be like, yeah, and then we ran out of budget. So, so Life is Strange is an excellent game series. Especially Absolutely the phenomenal. sound design. Yes. <laughs> My cousin because we did, happen to know the my, person who my cousin the did, My cousin did the sound design uh, <laughs> for the uh, uh, True Colors game. So, you know. So, uh, while I'm all about Life is Strange, uh, this is phenomenal that's coming to the Switch. It's not going to get me to buy it, but it's phenomenal that's coming to the Switch. It's good. It's a good series of games. If you like that style of game, it's coming to the Switch. Play it. Yeah. With headphones on, by the way. <laughs> Um, Romancing Saga Remaster. I don't even know. I don't even remember. It's on the list. They talked about it. I have nothing to say other than, yep, there it is. Too much rice. Too much rice. Um, Lego Brick Tales. Some sort of Lego themed game. Cool. Disney Speedstorm. No updates. They just showed it to remind you that it's a thing. Yeah. What does it have a release date? Speedstorm? Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't think it does because I was just on their website and it just says coming soon. It doesn't have a. Uh, I think it's going to be one of those things where they just release it. Twenty twenty two. It still says that twenty twenty two. It's releasing in twenty twenty two. Uh. So. Release date speculation. Yeah. No. There's no. They're probably, I would assume that it's, oh, however, we speculate that it's going to really late 2022 or early 2023. There was a PC beta that they were trying to get people to opt into. The Steam store for it says 2022. So we'll see. We'll see. Your Cyberpunk 2077 game, do you have that through the Epic Game Store or do you have it through Steam? Through Steam. Gotcha. It doesn't it's really. Say- it's on sale for twenty nine ninety nine right now. It's fifty percent off. Get it, 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 get it. You said it doesn't matter though. What do you mean? I was gonna say it doesn't matter whether you get it through Steam or Epic. Well, I I was looking to see if it's available on Xbox because you can do PC and then switch over to Xbox for some games. Yeah, I would get it on PC. The, the performance for consoles is so sketchy. Especially, you don't have an Xbox Series S, right? No, I do, have the Xbox One. Don't, don't, don't do that. No, no, no. Get it for PC if you're going to get it. Do not get it on a, on a last generation console. You will regret. <clears throat> they fixed a lot of stuff, but it's not worth playing on PS4 or, uh, or Xbox One. PC, PlayStation 5, maybe Series X. Mm-hmm. PCs, you've got a beefcake PC. Get it on. You're gonna get it on PC, even though I know it's a more of a pain for you to play. Yeah, it's so good though. It's really all right. Well, that was the Nintendo we made Direct. it. We made it through everything slowly. So but yeah. Surely. In conclusion, Nintendo, keep your main dishes and all the appetizers and desserts and things separate. This could have been a really good direct if it was just the meat and potatoes, but all the all the extra fluff really made it feel like a drag. Yeah. And then it kills me because the exciting moments were exciting. I screamed at Goldeneye. I screamed at Goldeneye. I was I excited about Splatoon. Zelda. I squealed for you. <laughs> for Zelda. Although I laughed at Tears of the Kingdom because at that point I was like this was so long. I had to sit through 40 minutes to get to this to get through another another rendered uh clip of Link falling through the air. 
So yeah, there were definitely some good points in this amidst the... There were some diamonds in the rough. We had to search through a lot of stuff to get to the good stuff, but... Yeah, that's what we got. Um, are we doing our episode? We're going to do a Splatoon review episode soon. I don't know if it's going to yeah. be Wednesday. I don't know. Maybe we'll do another Sunday thing. This was pretty good. We had some pretty good viewership here. We'll see. We'll see. Splatoon 3 review incoming soon. Um, otherwise, I will be streaming Splatoon 3 on Tuesday. Co-stream next Thursday. Thursday, yep. And then Corporal will be back. A week on from Sunday. Today. Yeah. Have a good remainder of your weekend, everybody. <laughs> um, thanks for stopping by, and we'll see Don't you Don't lick time. the mic. Don't lick the mic. Never lick the mic. Bye. Bye.